Yeah. Raspberry Pi better watch out because here, here they come. Here they come. Here they be. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone and joined courtesy of our satellite uh, uplink via Discord to LA because our yes. Jitsi system was like, hey, did you update something? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Are you go to burst into flames and do anything? It's like, yes, I am. I'm like, oh, that's oh. awesome, Jitsi. I look forward to playing with you the rest of the afternoon. Poor Ven. We got, you know, an inferior audio and video stream that Ven is going to try and fix later. <laughs> I'll fix it. I'll fix it. This is, this is just like, this, this is, uh, we all know, we all have a Jitsi in our life. We, yes. we do. It's that person's like, I need attention. I'm going to like scream uncontrollably until I get it. Here we <laughs> That's are. That's so true. <laughs> like, oh, how you doing, Jitsi? So I'm going to go hang out with Jitsi this afternoon. We're going to make up and everything will be fine by Saturday. So don't worry about it. Uh, Jill, whoa, whoa, we did learn something about Discord. If Jill tries to clap or snap, Discord's like, no. Yeah, it just, <laughs> that's very strange. <laughs> you know, I, I then again. It, it, it's fine with voice, but. <laughs> they, they, they have to have some clever stuff going on with your um, WebRTC stuff, especially for, you know, Discord and chat like that, because anybody with a microphone, they get on like, ah, and they get all crazy. And it's yeah. got to be something in the detection of like this person, you know, they, they have a level of derp. And they're like, well, this went over the derp level. Better just silence that microphone. And yes. you know. so that's going on. What's new with you, Joe? What's new with you? Well, I had fun in, with our practice maps yesterday on our Trackmania stream. I really like those maps. There were some really unique ones, and I'm looking forward to practicing them. <laughs> they're pretty fun. That was especially that LOL map. It's oh, the huge. first one. Like a like a half sphere. <laughs> yeah, this is like this big um, hover checkpoint that we all go down, and it takes a minute for the size of it to kick in. You're like, oh man, this thing's massive, and you got to get up enough speed to get up to the top. <laughs> if you like puzzle platforming, if you like a little bit of a fun racing, challenging, all that stuff, you're looking for that crippling addiction or a community of a Linux loving miscreants that get together on a regular schedule, come check it out. Uh, we got a lot of information in our Discord. If you sub, it doesn't cost you anything. If you get Amazon Prime, you use those Bezo box. Sub to us on Twitch, link that to our Discord, get all the information right there. Or, of course, if you're a patron, you already know everything, hook it up to the Discord. Come hang out with us. Uh, we even have audio video if you want to chat with that, or if you just want to sit and listen in, or if you want to do it asymmetrically. Server's up 24-7. You can just put your scores down and be like, go look at it next time you guys log in. Like, that's cool, too. So what have I been up to? Man, uh, I started playing... I needed a Metroidvania in my life, and I've, I've had uh, Bayovania is probably the best way to describe it, uh, Bloodstain for oh a couple my. of years now. Yeah, I've had it for a while, and I played it on a live stream a long time ago, just maybe, you know, maybe for a couple of minutes, and I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, maybe, whatever. You see, right now, Crowsworn should have been out, but it got delayed. Uh, so I thought Crowsworn was going to like tide me over until eventually Silk Song came out. Like, I need something in the background to play, something to pick up for like 10, 15 minutes. It's not bad if you can get over some of the weeby stuff in it. I mean, it's competently done. You know, it's from the creator of Castlevania with all the numbers filed off. I'm not telling anything new if you follow this kind of stuff. Um, gameplay's all right. Didn't have too bad a time with it. But, man, I almost, I spend time on eBay, Peru's and stuff. I almost won a bid. <laughs> on a used Epic motherboard, ATX motherboard that I've been trying to find. Uh, yeah. Which never go, they never go on sale. I have one on our Amazon wish list so I can track just in case. Just in, see, I was just reminded that I had to bring my tablet in here. I had to bring my tablet in here to log into Discord on this box because Discord didn't trust me, so I need to Yeah. <laughs> cut my notifications down to zero, which I just did. Ta-da. <laughs> um, so, uh, just seeing, like, nobody's bought one and returned one used. Like, come on, it will eventually happen. I tell you, I'm patient. But I've been keeping an eye on eBay. And I got into a little bit of a bidding war. And it did. Somebody had one. It's like, okay, how much are we going to pay for this? I got to about 325 with a day left. I'm like, how, how high do you want to go? Because this board new, 
It's going to run 500 bucks, which is a lot for a motherboard. But come on, it'd be a fun live stream to do. Plus, it's going to be good replacement for Threadbooper. And uh, then I got a notification while I was in the middle of like going back and forth clearly with this one person. It wasn't a bot because it wasn't instant. I got a notification like, oh, yeah, um, your hosting renewals do. And I'm like, dang it. Because I renew five years at a time. And I'm like, well, we're out of that bidding more. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we just take that money and put it right there. And we, but we're good for another couple of years. And we got our SSL certs and all that recertified. Womp, womp. Pay attention. I'll keep my eye out. We'll find one. Don't worry about it. Joe, let's get right into it because uh, unfortunately, this uh, company we're about to talk about does not have Epic options, which is probably for the best. No, it doesn't. But it has Epic, Epic laptop and motherboard options. <laughs> so, uh, Framework, the wonderfully awesome company behind the modular, sustainable, upgradable, and repairable laptops that we talk about here on L LWW quite a bit, has an 11th gen Intel Core i5 Tiger Lake processor motherboard soon to be available for 199 US dollars and up. <laughs> that, that is rather incredible. They also have an Intel Core i7, 11th Gen, uh, 1165G7 for $299, and a Core i7, 1185G7, available right now. And they just sold out of the Core i5 model for $199. But the awesome thing is that the Core i5 model used to be $449. So <laughs> you are getting a great deal for $199, but you have to grab them while they're available. And all models have a PCIe 4.0 storage slot, an Intel XE onboard graphics, four USB holes, support for up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and come pre-installed with the heatsink and fan. And you can 3D print a case or buy one pre-built on the Framework website for just $39 from Cooler Master, which is a great deal. And this is such an awesome way to get a hold of an x86 mini PC to use for your projects. And this may be a really good option for Ven for his needs, <laughs> if he can get one. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, you see, what happened is Framework is moving their warehouse from China to Taiwan. I'm like, okay, we got to move shop. So they're digging around with all the old stuff in a warehouse. You know, if you've ever moved a business or if you just moved house before, you're like, hey, look, I found some things. What did they find? Well, 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 they found a bunch of like partially finished main boards. Like, okay. Then they found some already finished ones. I'm like, ah, so we have excess inventory, which is neat. And they wanted to do something with it. So if you head over to their web zone, all this is going to be in our show notes. These things are on fire cell. And this is a, the great, this is the main board for the laptop itself. This is something that you can print that case for, or just hook up and put it on a desk and, you know, spill some diet tab on and short it yeah. real quick. What do we have? We have the i7. So that's $299, originally $700, bucks, 399 i7. That's great. And then we have the i5 and the everyone, uh, the one that everybody get a little bit excited about at $199, which is sold out. And if you're paying attention, you notice I said, these were all spare parts that they found in the warehouse. So once these are gone, womp womp, we're not going to be seeing anymore. Gone. Because there's yeah. no more there. So is that in credit deal? Because uh, like 200 bucks, the i5, I know. Like, oh, that'd be fun to play okay. around with. Uh, you missed out. You don't get one. However, the i7, which was originally $1,000, you know, uh, the 1118 5G7. So yeah, 399, like that, that's a big jump, you know, from 200 to uh, 400. But, yeah. you know, those are still going to be in stock. Um, and 299 for the 1116 5G7. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, yeah, but 199 would have been kind of interesting. You kind of had to know about this and have jumped on it early. But by the time it, it, this has made it to like blogs and places like that, those were gone. <laughs> They're sold out. Yeah. They were gone. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. Um, who knows? Maybe they'll find some. And it's good that having components like this, you know, if you don't know about framework, you know, for years and years and years, HP, Dell, everybody, Acer, 
And, uh, you know, even Apple, they came out and said, well, we can't make a uh, easily serviceable module laptop because it'll be like big, chonky and a horrible thing. Framework. Out of nowhere, you know, a bunch of people got together. Not necessarily industry people at all. They came together and like, no, 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 the, the, that's just lies. Here, here's how you make a nice, <laughs> slim, ultralight, but then it's modular and you can upgrade things like the monitor, like the main board. And having that system is so neat because they can do stuff like this because this, this is like a look into the future. So don't get too upset that you missed out on this great deal because the next upgrade, the next generation, they're going to have extra boards laying around and they can do this, you know, because you'll never see Dell saying, oh yeah, would you like to buy some discounted laptop motherboard? Well, what would you do with them, right? These being modular, you can make your own case for them, set it up and do something with it. So, you know, down the road, we will definitely see some additional great deals on older framework hardware because they have the ability to do that. And that's something no other laptop manufacturer has. Good on you, framework. Really happy about that. Yeah, me too. Now, something I talked about, uh, if you were a patron, you got to see this, uh, I like two weeks ago, I put up the video, I picked up one of these guys, AJA Kona. Why? Because I'm like, man, it has been over a year since they've added support and AJA helped uh, the OBS team, open broadcaster team, add support for their capture cards and it works with Linux. I'm like, how come nobody's ever done a video about this? I have found out, um, see, I'm always on the lookout for like a good budget capture card for you guys and gals in the audience and you know used these things are about 70 bucks so i'm like all right 1080p 60 capture 70 dollars that kind of fits the bill but there's a few catches to this because like right out of the box this is a like thesis about how you get one of these working on linux we're talking kernel downgrades for the driver you gotta build an sdk you gotta do a custom build of obs and you got to deal with mini HDMI ports, one of the most hated ports known to humanity. But depending on who you are, depending on who you are, that either sounds like an absolute nightmare or a really fun weekend. And um, this is very typical professional, like real pro hardware, which means that uh, software is usually pretty bad and the hardware is real fussy and finicky. It's not always a good thing when you get pro snuff. I stacked it up in the video against the... Uh, Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K and the EVGA XR1 Lite. And, uh, you know, quality wise, it keeps up with the Pro 4. Now, the Intensity Pro 4K, not too big of a deal, but it is limited to 1080p60. That's really the only usable thing it does. It does have SDI in and out. However, as I learned, um, you can't do output if you're doing input, which Blew my mind because the Intensity Pro 4K, the consumer grade black magic card, does it all day long with no problem. So, where am I at with the AGA Kona HDMI? Uh, well, here we go. I, I gave it four stars out of 10 because our review system for hardware uses stars and I'm too lazy to change it. Uh, it doesn't work out of the box. It's a pain to set up. It's really stable. Like these things are built like tanks. They're the entire board and their entire chain, manufacturing chain for AJA is all done in the United States. Like they have complete control over their chain. Price though, if you get to buy one of these new, you're looking at 1800 bucks, but again, 70 bucks euros, like maybe. I wouldn't recommend it unless uh, you, for whatever reason, you were just curious, you wanted to play around with one. I think their newer cards, the uh, Kona 5s uh, do work with um, B4L2 under Linux. I'm not 100% on that. Nor will I be because those cards are like three thousand dollars, and you know I wow. just yeah not gonna be messing around with it. But I wanted this is just one of those weird things of when I got done with this, it's like oh that's why nobody's bothered to do a video on getting these set up on Linux. Probably because they got about halfway through and they're like no because you know if you take one of these and you want to put it in like W twelve, think of something like twenty two steps I ended up writing out and uh yeah there's there, a lot on your on your page <laughs> there's a lot to go yeah. over to get it up and running so if you're in a position where curse you tablet i muted notifications this uh tablet's Aww. like no i i want attention <laughs> quit being like jitsi tablet yeah i want attention i got you on discord <laughs> let me see uh who, who was that uh i don't even know who that was see this is why i don't keep mobile stuff in here when i'm uh, doing the shows yeah, either yeah. do I. 
It's like methamphetamines, man. You're like, mm, what was that? Huh? Notification. Push notifications are evil, but mm-hmm. we're all hooked on them, whether or not we realize it. And even when you take that digital break and you come back, usually the first thing I do is like I power on one of the tablets around the house and pull the note. And I was like, all right, let's see what I got to deal with. So AJA Kona LHI technically works. We've sussed that out. And uh, so if you ever run across one and you're like, somebody's giving it to you, you can be rest assured that you can at least use it as a capture card under Linux. Now, slice of pies. Extra slicey with bonus pies this week because we have not one but two things to talk about, and one of them being the orange pie zero two. Wuh. Yeah, wuh. <laughs> so yeah, the orange pie zero two W is a new board from Orange Pie based in China. It has just been released, and as you might suspect by the name, the Orange Pie zero two W is an alternative to the Raspberry Pi zero. 2W with a similar form factor, form factor and features. And the Orange Pi Zero 2W has a faster CPU. It has an all-winner H618 quad-core Cortex A53 running at 1.5 gigahertz. But its standout feature is that it comes in one gigabyte to four gigabyte of RAM options, as opposed to the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W's. 512 megabytes of RAM. And uh, some of the other Orange Pi Zero 2W specs, besides the RAM, which this is what's interesting. It's got one gigabyte, 1.5 gigabyte, two gigabyte, or four gigabyte options. So there's actually a 1.5 in there. (laughs) I thought that was kind of cool. And it has 16 megabytes of SPI flash storage for the bootloader. And of course, a micro SD card slot. It has mini HDMI 2.0 up to 4K 60 video out, dual band Wi Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0 with an external antenna, which is very nice. 100 megabits Ethernet via a function connector. And of course, it has a 40 pin Raspberry Pi GPIO header. And it sells for really, really cheap really inexpensive on aliexpress the board sells for twelve dollars and ninety cents for the one gigabyte model fifteen dollars and ninety cents for the 1.5 gigabyte model eighteen point eighteen dollars and ninety cents for the two gigabyte model and twenty three dollars for the four gigabyte model and they can also be found on amazon for reasonable prices at 26 99 for the four gigabyte model, or you can get it um, as a, a kit with uh, the uh, power supply and add-on board. And yeah, so, you know, the older, actually the older Raspberry Pi Zero 2W with 512 megabytes of RAM is, is back to a more normal price on Amazon, but it's $34.99, which is, you know, quite a bit more than the, <laughs> the 26 99 on Amazon for the four gig model. So which one would you buy? <laughs> I think that's a, that's a no brainer there. But thank you to our Theron, our wonderful patron advisor in chat for bringing this to our attention. This is really cool. <laughs> it's uh, pretty neat. I mean, the kit itself, things are getting smaller, things are getting faster, things are getting cheaper. This is the natural forward progression that we were expecting to see over the past two and a half, three years when none of that really happened, uh, especially with Raspberry Pi. They were like, mm, no, mm-hmm. we're not going to make anything. And we are starting to see stuff that I was talking about like a year ago. I'm like, yeah. Raspberry Pi better watch out because here, here they come, here they come, here they be. Uh, this is the part they get my attention. This is neat. This is neat. So cool. This is an expansion board. You clip it on. It's got a ribbon cable. What do you get with it? Oh, man. You get the uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You get USB. You get three buttons. So you can have a power on button, power off button, Ooh. and a random button. You can, <laughs> it's an optional button. You can do RNG. Does it power on, power off, or hibernate? Who you never know. You know, it's the iPhone. You can make it do it. It's programmable. You get IR. And here's what got my attention. This thing right here in the middle. That's Ethernet. Ooh. That's Ethernet. Huh. It's like, oh boy, hang on. Sweet. I might be able to do something with one of these. Hmm. 
going to run some parts. Yes, Samsung tablet. I'm aware. Thank you for the other I, I heard you too, Samsung tablet. <laughs> there, there. We still love you. It's okay. <laughs> um, the problem with the, because, uh, you know, having physical Ethernet, it's got Wi-Fi built into the board, but you want that physical Ethernet uh, cable to plug in. This is about the most retro McRetro thing in the world. I didn't even know you could get parts for this. Uh, the, the Ethernet is 10100. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. 100, 10, 100, yeah. not 10, 100 megabytes. No, 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 10, 100 megabits. Yeah. Not gigabit, but 10, 100. Megabit. Yeah. That, like, okay. Now, if you're using this in, like, industrial applications and stuff like that, we have extraordinarily low data requirements. But the second you want to do, um, I don't know, something crazy like watch a YouTube video? Uh uh Yeah. It's not going to be a good uh, experience. I kind of hope I need to go digging, digging around because I, I, I want, I want to believe in my, um, where, where the heart thing should be, uh, that that's a typo. Yeah, uh, I know. That's a, it's, I'm hoping it says a thousand, not a <laughs> hundred. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> Because that doesn't make sense. That really doesn't. Because <laughs> most of a lot of the add-on hats for the Raspberry Pi are gigabit. Well, I mean, so. it is going over that ribbon cable too, though. Yeah, that's true. Right. This uh, is a tiny one. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I think was like the spec that they made it for. Is like this thing just needs to be able to ping something, you know, for like an IoT type thing. It's not going to be data intensive. It just needs uh, hardware connectivity. That's going to give it. Who knows? But I also wouldn't mind seeing a hat like this for, uh, you know, flip it around, put it on the other side, actually use the GPIO pins. I don't know if all, what all is exposed, but something with like a nice little breakout where I can make a uh, Raspberry Pi or one of these, like make, make a little sandwich, like a little compute sandwich. I like that idea. Um, yeah, super compute cheap. Sandwich. You, can, you can get the board with the expansion thing, even on Amazon here in the yeah. States for like $36. Yeah, mm. that was such a good price. <laughs> Go forth and play with it. The next bit we have to talk about is a hackable electronic saxophone with mechanical keys. Oh, yeah, that's right. You so can make awesome. noise while you're making noise, kids. I would get excited because this is a pocket <laughs> sax. Pocket sax. No, I said sax. Come on. Get your minds out of the gutter, kids. No. <laughs> You, you might want to think, maybe you want to settle for an electronic musical instrument that resembles a saxophone. Well, this resembles a saxophone if you squint just a little bit. And it's got those mechanical keys on them. Look at it. Like, you can make clicky noises, even if you don't feel like blowing into it. You can just walk around the house annoying people. And <laughs> it, it's using fluid synth to turn your wheezes into music, which is kind of neat. It's all completely open source software and hardware. And it's currently on crowd supply right now with a goal of $15,000. And they're at 11 grand with 36 days left to go. I think they're going to make it, Jill. I yeah, think they are. They're they going to make it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, in the vein of like my electric cello. You know, it's got the same concept and you can mix and match. They want to do the PCBs and everything you need. So I, I think it's pretty neat. How about you, Jill? Yeah, I really do, too. I think this is an incredible way to get, you know, a, a cheap saxophone, which, you know, truly those can cost from $250 to thousands of dollars, depending on the brand and where you buy it. And it's really a great way to learn how to use and play one and see if you really want to invest some money buying a sax. Uh, that was actually one of the in instruments I was interested in many years ago. Uh, just just from watching people play it, it, it I, and the sounds of it, I always like the the kind of moaning groans it makes. <laughs> really cool. The chainsaw. Yeah, <laughs> the chainsaw. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. You know, I took a look yeah. around, and I just couldn't figure out where exactly to... Ah, uh, uh, see, I had a feeling you would have one, but put, uh, I had that feeling. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh, it's been a while since you played. <laughs> well, I'm trying to hold it up, Jill. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, I play a uh, saxophone, cello, trumpet. Uh, yeah. Clarinet. Uh, 
but I don't mess around with anything with a dual reeded instrument. So RIP oboes. Uh, I can't tango with one of those. Yeah, uh, this is my tenor sax one. I got a tenor sax and I got an alto sax, but. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, this, this is neat. I mean, this this hits me with the um, same reason that uh, I bought an electric cello. Is I don't make noise when I'm playing it. I yeah. just put on my headphones and sit and just jam out with it. And kind of the same thing with this. Like, you can practice on it without having to blow up everybody around. Um, put on some headphones and jam out. So I like the idea. Um, Too. I think it's cool that, you know, all, all, if you're rehearsing all the, all the, the only noise your neighbors and family members will hear <sighs> is, you know, the clicking of the mechanical keys. <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> but they didn't seem to be too loud, you know, on the video. You have to be pretty close proximity. Yeah, but you could put it, clickier ones like in it, Jill, and make it even more annoying. Yes, you could put, uh, <laughs> if you make them uh, blues. <laughs> I Blue mean, keycaps. Yeah, live, live <laughs> your switches. best uh, clicky life. Yeah, I really That's like really that it's nice. completely open and, you know, it, it looks delightfully ridiculous. Um, yeah, just, just good form. Shove a Raspberry Pi in it and yeah. uh, call it a day. It is going to be super low cost to build, which is always that. That's kind of what gets me. Because uh, when you have companies that, you know, devices like this do exist, and I'll always go back to my electric cello. Um, like Yamaha is just known, like they make the electric cello. And used, that thing was $1,200. So yeah, it wasn't a good experience. Um, you look for like a digital sax or something like that. It's going to be incredibly expensive. Something like this, you're going to be able to build, you know, for 100, 200 bucks. Amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's so cool. And I'm so happy, Van, you got out your, your sax. Cause I, I kind of remembered you saying you had played. So, and I, I knew you, you're a musician and you play other instruments and some of them, uh, some of the instruments you featured in your videos. You get, um, <laughs> yeah, I've got tours and all that. I mean, I nerd out about uh, a lot of stuff, kids, you know, it's not computers. It's not always automotive. It's not engineering. It's, it's also music, uh, chemistry, you know, well, like, like I'm, I, I love playing around <laughs> with a lot of stuff. And music is one of them. So yeah, um, there we go. Go check out everything. Look at that. We did it this in 28 minutes, Jill. So we got time Yay! to pull up some music <laughs> and roll the cool. credit. <laughs> so true, Beastwick. Toot toot, he says in chat. <laughs> yeah, the sax just has such a romantic kind of sound. It's, I, I learned to really appreciate it a lot more as I got older. And thank you to our advisors again, our, our Theron and Omegas and our executive producers, our Chicago kicks people level, super dust out, empty. We got our sea monsters, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, tons of death notes, <laughs> turnover, Ogi one <laughs> and lots of chairlings. Uh, those names are so, so tiny, I can't read them. <laughs> But I try. <laughs> Jill refuses Thanks. to hit pause on a video one day. I know. I really need to do this. Hey, everybody. Take a Thanks for making this show possible. You know we love you. <laughs> Come hang out with us. We're in Discord the other six days of the week. We also got IRC and uh, live streams, all the other fun places. And I'll be back with Jill on Friday for Track <laughs> Mania. See you then. Bye bye. Love you all. <laughs>